a slow or a fast tempo? Which is better for building muscle according to the science? Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here, PhD in sports science with Wolf Coaching, and today we're discussing tempo. First off, what has seemed to work for people in the past? Well, at the very least, people in the past, successful bodybuilders for example, have used a variety of tempos and they've all gotten pretty jacked, which at the very least suggests that tempo isn't going to be a hugely influential variable when it comes to maximizing muscle growth. In Mike Menser's heavy duty training approach, for example, which was kind of a continuation of a lot of Arthur Jones's advice, he recommended doing repetitions that lasted eight seconds. And Mike Menser got very jacked. And meanwhile, on the other end of the spectrum, we have people like Branch Warren, whose reps often last like one or two seconds. And he's also very jacked. But ultimately, the reason you don't see me discussing that as particularly strong evidence for one approach or the other is that looking at the physiques of highly successful advanced bodybuilders doesn't really tell us what will work best by a few percentage points for the average lifter like you or I. So instead of looking at just elite bodybuilders, what does the science tell us? Well, on average, a faster tempo or more explosive cadence leads to you being able to perform more repetitions and potentially accumulating greater volume load. However, when you use a slower tempo, you will generally reach failure a little bit quicker. And so essentially, when you're using a slower or a faster tempo, you're essentially trading out more volume load for more time and attention. But assuming you still hit failure, does it matter whether you go with a slower tempo or with a faster tempo? Well, let's look at the evidence. The first meta-analysis on the effect of repetition duration, or essentially how fast you lift, on hypertrophy was performed by Brad Schoenfeld and colleagues in 2015. They looked at the results of eight different studies with repetition durations lasting all the way from half a second per rep all the way to 15 seconds per rep. They categorized repetition durations or tempos into being either fast, medium, or slow. Fast corresponded to 0.5 to 4 seconds per rep. Medium corresponded to 4 to 8 seconds per rep, and slow corresponded to 8 or more seconds per rep. And by and large, there were no differences between fast reps, so between half a second and 4 seconds, and medium reps, between 4 seconds and 8 seconds. However, performing repetitions that lasted more than about 8 seconds was probably worse for hypertrophy. Likewise, while the effect sizes, or essentially the best hypertrophy, was generally seen in the faster group between half a second to 4 seconds per rep, the confidence intervals were very large, aka there was too much variance for us to be able to confidently say there is an effect here that is in favor of faster tempos of just half a second to four seconds. But at the very least, if your reps are too slow, say eight or more seconds, that does seem to be worse for muscle growth according to this meta-analysis. However, following on from this, there has been a more recent, up-to-date, systematic review by Wilkin colleagues on the same topic. Their takeaway was similarly lukewarm. Here's what they had to say. The results of these studies indicate that neither isolated slow nor isolated fast fast movement tempos are effective for muscle hypertrophy, but it seems that the most favorable is a combination of slower movement in the eccentric phase with a faster movement during the concentric phase. And that's all well and good. Your eccentric phase apparently should be slightly longer at least than your concentric phase. But how long should that be? Well, most of your sets should take between 40 to about 70 seconds to complete, with the authors recommending anything from a one second eccentric with a concentric phase that's as fast as you can possibly make it, to a 10 second eccentric phase and a 10 second concentric phase. It's important to note that this recommendation of all the way up to 10 second eccentrics and concentric phases for 20 second repetitions does clash with this previous meta-analysis by Schoenfeld and colleagues. So with all of that evidence reviewed, what do we actually do in the gym? Well, one thing I think is for sure is that excessively slow tempos, say much above eight seconds per rep, probably aren't ideal for hypertrophy. Likewise, excessively fast tempos where you literally have no eccentric control, no control in the lowering phase, are also going to be counterproductive. I think the best guideline we have to maximize hypertrophy right now is your eccentric phase or your lowering phase should take at least a second and on average should be longer than the lifting phase or the concentric phase of the movement. But overall, here's what the evidence suggests. 
there's just not a huge effect to tempo, whether you go a little bit slower or a little bit faster, once you're in a reasonable range for how long your reps last. We just don't fully know yet whether, for example, repetition taking five seconds with a four second eccentric and an explosive concentric is going to be better than say a two second rep. We just don't have that granularity yet and so far, it doesn't seem to matter. Ultimately, with tempo, it seems that there's many roads that lead to Rome. Whether you lift with a faster tempo and get more reps in and eventually reach failure, or whether you lift with a slower tempo, get fewer reps, but still eventually reach failure. The main thing appears to be getting sufficiently close to failure, having some eccentric control on each repetition, and that is what is going to stimulate hypertrophy, not the exact configuration of how long your eccentric concentric phase need to be. However, let me now give you some of my anecdotal experience as a coach and as a lifter when it comes to tempo. First off, I think slower tempos can be a good learning tool for technique. If someone's completely new to a movement and they're struggling with a certain aspect, slowing down the movement often gives them more time to think through things as they're doing them and allows them to better incorporate certain cues or improvements in their technique. However, that same super slow tempo is generally something I have people move away from as soon as possible. And there's a few reasons for that. Number one is that in my experience and a lot of clients' experiences, super slow tempos can actually make it a little bit harder to reach failure sometimes. I suspect it might be for a similar reason as why high rep ranges make it harder to gauge how close to failure you are, but I don't really know. I just find that generally when you train with a super slow tempo, some people find it harder to go as close to failure. Next up, and this might just be personal preference, and because there's such a wide range of things that can work here, personal preference does play a role. I think, and a lot of people I've coached, just don't enjoy slower tempos all that much. They just seem less fun than slightly more explosive tempos where your average rep might take two to three or four seconds at the most. But finally, slower tempos, I think, all the way up to maybe eight seconds per rep, can be a useful tool to use when you're training around pain. For example, I currently had a little bit of shoulder pain. The way I'm modifying my training to still be able to get in the gym, get an effective growth stimulus from that session, is to just slow down the tempo by a decent amount. This reduces the weight I'm using, it just makes everything feel a bit less painful, and as long as I'm still going as close to failure and my reps take no longer than about eight seconds, I'm still able to get an effective growth stimulus. With all that being said, here are a few quick takeaways. Number one, repetition durations of maybe between two and eight seconds can work. I think the upper end of that range is usually not advisable because it makes it harder to go as close to failure. A lot of people don't find it as fun, but it can be useful when it comes to learning technique and sometimes when training around pain. But ultimately, whether you're training with two to three second reps or six to eight second reps, as long as you're going sufficiently close to failure with both approaches, there's just not really any evidence right now to suggest that either approach is better for muscle growth. And when you look at successful bodybuilders, and this doesn't mean a whole lot, there are people using both approaches that have gotten quite jacked. If you enjoyed the video, please comment, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below if you disagree with me, if you agree with me, what tempo do you use? If you'd like me to coach you, check out the link above. Have a great day, and I will see you guys, my subscribers, in that next one. Peace. Here comes the waffle, not the tasty kind, the get me mad revenue kind. <laughs>